Windows, Mac, Windows, Mac. Which one's better? Which one should you use? Well, I can't answer that, but I'll show you a way to run both of them on your PC so that you can decide for yourself. What we're going to be doing is installing Mac OS X Snow Leopard on VirtualBox. VirtualBox is like a virtual computer within your computer, kind of like Inception. Dude. Now the legality of this is questionable, and if you wanted to go hog wild and be totally illegal, you can torrent a Mac ISO created by IATKOS or by Hazard and install it. If you want to do that, you can follow this tutorial. But in the hopes of being slightly less illegal, I'm going to be installing a retail version of Snow Leopard that I purchased. To kick this off, you're going to need to download VirtualBox, which is totally free and is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. You also need a retail copy of Snow Leopard and a copy of iBoot, which you can download from here, because you won't be able to boot to the Snow Leopard installation disk without it. After you have VirtualBox installed and started up, click on the new icon. Click Next, give the virtual machine a name such as Snow Leopard, choose Mac OS X for the operating system and Mac OS X server as the version type, and then click Next. Now you want to set the amount of memory to use. The recommended setting is 2048 megabytes or 2 gigabytes, but that all depends on how much memory your computer has. The green line below the slider will tell how much memory you can safely allocate. After that, select Boot Hard Disk. Create a new disk and click Next to launch the Disk Wizard and then click Next again. Select Fixed Storage Size and then click Next. Set it to around 20 gigabytes if you have that much space available on your hard drive. Then click Next and Finish and wait a few minutes for it to be created and then click Finish again. You should now see the new virtual machine in the list and you can select it and click Settings. Under the System tab, make sure P2X3 is selected in the chipset and that Enable IO APIC is checked and Enable EFI is unchecked. Then under the Processor tab, if you can, move the slider up to at least two processors, but the green line underneath it will tell you how much you can use. Under the Display Settings, check 3D Acceleration and move the video memory up to whatever the green line allows. After that, click on Storage. Select the CD under IDE Controller and then click on the CD icon under CD DVD Drive Attributes. First select Host Drive D and check the Pass Through box. Then click on the CD icon again and select Choose a Virtual CD DVD Disk File and navigate to the iBoot ISO that we downloaded earlier and click Open and then click OK. With your Snow Leopard disk in your computer's disk drive, select your virtual machine from the list and click on Start. After reading and closing the information box, you should see a screen that looks like this. When you do, right click on the CD icon in the lower right hand corner of the window and choose Host DVD Drive. Now click anywhere inside the window and hit F5 on your keyboard to refresh the screen. When you see the icon change to Mac OS X Install DVD, hit Enter. You should now see the Mac loader screen. Eventually the setup will start. Just do the OKs, Nexts, and Continues until you get to this screen. Here you want to go to Utilities, Disk Utility, and when the Disk Utility loads, select your VBox hard drive from the list and click on the Erase tab. Give it a name if you want and then click Erase. Then confirm it and wait for the hard drive to reformat. When it's through, quit the Disk Utility and it will bring you back to the Install screen. Just select your newly formatted hard drive and click Install. Once the installation has completed, it will ask you to reboot your computer. But before you do that, right click on the CD icon again and select your iBoot ISO. Once it reboots, select your Mac OS X installation and hit enter to boot it. Please note that you have to use iBoot in order to boot to the OS X installation. If you don't want to do that, then you can download and install the iBoot MultiBeast from within your Mac installation. All right, be sure to check out Tinkernut.com on Tumblr, Facebook, and Twitter. And that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to Tinkernut.com.